Before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Hey friends, good morning. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I hope everybody is getting geared up for a wonderful week as well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a case that happened back in 1996, way back in the 1900s. That's what it feels like every time I talk about something back in the 1990s. This is the case of Selena Mays, and it's one of those ones that will just stick with you when you hear about it. Before we get into it though, I just wanna let you guys know that, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. Do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there, and there's a $2 tier where all the true crime stuff that cannot go on to YouTube Due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon. Just make sure you read the About section and what each tier offers before you join. I also have an Instagram, a Facebook, a Snapchat, and I'm on Like to Know It. If you want to come and check me out, all of those links are down in the description box. So the case of Selena Mays. Now, it does have some twists and turns to it, but I'm going to do like I typically do. I'm going to tell you guys the whole entire story from the best of my ability with the information that is publicly already out there. And then at the end, I will give you guys my opinion. So let's just start at the beginning. Selena Jeanette Mays was born in Miami, Florida in 1984 to her parents, CJ Mays and Lynn Vital. Now in 1986, Selena and her family moved to Palmyra, New Jersey, totally opposite end of the United States from Florida, all the way up to New Jersey. And after what was said to be cleaning up their lives, Selena's parents, CJ and Lynn, ended up splitting up. Now, when I say clean up their lives, allegedly Selena's parents had substance issues and had a, you know, a rough relationship together. So they said that they cleaned up their lives and then they ended up splitting. Selena mostly stayed with her mom, but CJ, who is her father, continued to try to see Selena as much as he could. However, sadly, in 1994, Selena's mother ended up passing away from a fatal aneurysm. And this led to a very, very heated custody battle between Selena's father, CJ, and Selena's mother's whole side of her family. Now, CJ, Selena's father, didn't have, again, the best history from his younger years growing up in Miami, Florida. And according to reports out there, Selena's mother's family really used that against him in court to try to fight him for custody in order to keep Selena. But CJ insisted that he had grown up and left that old life behind him. Now, because of CJ's persistence, which I think is awesome, he ended up winning custody of his daughter. So he was going to court and he was fighting for her against the whole maternal side of the family and he did end up winning and he did end up getting custody of Selena. Then we fast forward to 1996 when Selena was 12 years old and she was living in Willingboro, New Jersey with her father, CJ, his wife, who was now Selena's stepmother, Yvette, and she had a little sister then as well at this time and a few other family members. Now, when I was researching this, it said that Selena was living in a communal home that was owned or ran by the church that they were going to. See, Selena's aunt was the pastor over this church that they were going to. We're going to talk more about it later. But according to these reports, Selena, along with her father, her now stepmother, her little sister, and all of these other family members were all living in one home. And two months before Selena actually turned 12 years old, she came to her father and her stepmother and told them that she thought she was pregnant. Yes. Now, of course, her father being what he would later say was disappointed. I could only imagine if disappointed was an accurate word. I think I would be infuriated okay like a dragon trying to figure out what is going on with my little one okay but they were asking her okay 
how did this happen? Selena insisted that she was not going to tell them who the father was. And she told them, because they were pressing her, pressing her constantly. She finally ended up telling them that it was a 16-year-old boy that nobody knew. They wanted to know, does he go to our church? Do we know him? And Selena's telling them, nope. Some boy I met at the skating rink, you don't know him and all of that. And you can only imagine how this news completely had a ripple effect through their lives and through the church and through their home and, and everything. And the family was trying to what they would call work through this when something unexpected happened. On December 15th of 1996, it was basically like any other day. Nothing seemed off and Selena seemed to be acting completely normal. That evening, Selena said goodnight to her family and her family would say that she went to bed at around 11 p.m. The next morning, Selena's stepmom was making breakfast and she sent Selena's four-year-old sister upstairs to Selena's room to wake her up to come down to eat. Her four-year-old sister went upstairs. She said, hey, come eat breakfast, Selena. She goes back downstairs. When she goes back downstairs, Selena did not come back down. So Selena's stepmom sent her back up. When she went back up, she went to her bed and this is when they realized that Selena was not in her bed. Selena was gone. Selena's pillows and blankets had been made up to look like she was laying in the bed, but she wasn't there. All of her personal belongings had been left behind, including like her favorite purse and other little things that Selena always had with her. And it looked like she hadn't taken anything, not even her prenatal vitamins. Now, when they realized Selena was not there, I am guessing this part because I cannot ask them. I am guessing that they thought she snuck out, she ran away because at this point she was nine months pregnant. Okay, she's 12, but they didn't know what to do. On December 17th, which was 24 hours later, Selena's father ended up calling the police to report her missing. When speaking to the cops, Selena's family said that everything seemed completely normal with her the day before. However, when Selena's stepmom was like sitting there rethinking, replaying everything over that happened the day before, this is when Selena's stepmom ended up telling the cops that the night before, before Selena went to bed, she went around to people in the family and gave them a kiss and thanked them for everything. You know, she was like looking back at it like, was that a goodbye thank you? You know, like, I just wanna thank you for everything. So she thought that that was kind of weird at that time, but she didn't think anything of it when it was happening. Now, it is said that because of the way that Selena's bed was made up, Originally, the cops thought that this was probably just like a runaway. She was going to come back. They looked for her, but it wasn't taken seriously like a kidnapping or something. However, when the holidays came and went, because mind you, they called the cops on December 17th. When she didn't come home or call for Christmas, when she didn't come home on her due date, the cops really knew something was wrong then. And this is when allegedly they really began to search for Selena. They begged the community to keep an eye out for her. I mean, everywhere you went, people were asking about her or putting up posters. However, they didn't receive very many tips and the tips that they did receive weren't very helpful. When Selena's due date came and went, everybody was extremely worried. I mean, they were checking the hospitals to see if she was in there. I mean, she would not have been able to hide her age. It was said that she was going to have to have a C-section because of her age. I saw a missing post that said that she was only five foot, 120 pounds. I mean, so she was a small framed, beautiful young girl and they're checking the hospitals and she's not there. I cannot imagine the worry of the family at this point. Like she's 12 and probably thinking she's going through this alone and, and all of this. So when they, when, when the due date came and went and they still hadn't heard from her and she wasn't in any of the hospitals giving birth. They were just absolutely losing it. The cops investigated, investigated, asked people, nobody knew anything. And unfortunately the case went cold. Over the years, investigators did end up receiving around 250 tips. But like when you think about 250 tips over the years, 
that's not very many tips. I mean, in some of these high profile cases that we see now, but again, there's the internet. So, but still they're getting thousands of tips a day. There was one that was promising in January of 1997. It was from the owner of a local restaurant in Howell, New Jersey. This owner had actually reported to seeing Selena at his restaurant. He said that Selena was with a pastor and several other people and that Selena did not look pregnant. However, when the cops looked into it further, it was determined that the girl this restaurant owner thought was Selena actually was another woman and was not Selena. So then investigators were back to square one. Now let's talk about the theories. Because Selena insisted on keeping the father of her unborn child at the time's identity a secret, a lot of people think that Selena ran away from home so a paternity test could not be done. Others think that Selena was taken against her will possibly by someone even in her own family. Selena's family history really just kind of complicated things and complicated the investigation anyways. And both sides of the family accused the other side. So the maternal side of the family was definitely accusing her father, CJ, and them because they were fighting for her the whole time. And CJ's side of the family was thinking that because they were still fighting for her, was thinking that her, the maternal side of the family came and got her in the middle of the night and was hiding her from them. A very popular theory that has floated around out there over the years was that Selena was pregnant by her own father, CJ. However, CJ had actually had a vasectomy years prior and he confirmed this through his doctor and it just was not possible that he did that to his daughter and got her pregnant. Throughout this investigation over the years, it was reported that a lot of Selena's family members were uncooperative with the police, which made gathering information nearly impossible. It also didn't help the investigators make any progress when a judge ended up denying the request to search Selena's home after she went missing. It was said that the judge denied this request because he said that he wanted to be careful not to make Selena's families any more of a victim than they were. So the judge was really feeling for Selena's father and stepmother and everybody that lived with her because all eyes were on them. In the nearly 30 years since Selena's disappearance, several of these family members that were living in the house with her have passed away, including her father, CJ, who passed away in 2019. And this left the investigators with questions that they will probably never get the answers to. To this day though, the police suspect that the church that Selena's family attended had something to do with her disappearance. After the family ended up moving to New Jersey, CJ, Selena's father, joined the Pentecostal Gospel of Christ ministry in Mount Holly. Now, after he joined, it wasn't long until the whole entire family joined as well. So CJ, her father joined first. The next thing you know, stepmom, Selena, and her little sister, everybody was a part of this church. It was even said that Selena's father, CJ, took her out of public school and began to homeschool her at the church. So Selena was going to the church, completely involved in the church, and going to school at the church, and eventually living in a communal home with people from the church. But everybody that investigators spoke to said that Selena was very happy and that they said that she sang in the choir and that Faith was a big part of her life and it was even one of the reasons why like Selena's decided to keep her baby and that her family, even though they were upset and wanting to know who the father was, they supported her keeping the baby because they believed like that was, that's part of their faith. It is also reported that at one point, CJ was saying that he believed Selena did run away because she seemed upset when she was told that a blood test could reveal who the father was. When Selena would just continue, continue, continue to deny telling her family who the father was, eventually her dad, CJ, said, hey, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out who the dad is because when you have this baby, a DNA test is gonna be done and we're gonna know. And they say that she got really upset because at first she didn't know that was even possible. There were also tons of rumors about the church after Selena ended up going missing. The small congregation was actually led by Selena's aunt, Sharita Smith. The rumors allege that Sharita was a very strict authoritarian 
and ran the church that way. Then you get this, in 1998, Two years after Selena went missing, the police ended up arresting Sharita's son, and he was 23 years old. His name was Sean Smith, and he was arrested for essaying two minor girls, and these two minors were actually a part of the church as well. The cops would later decline to comment whether Sean's arrest had any connection at all to Selena's disappearance, but it was reported that Selena and Sean were both living in that same house when she disappeared and that Sean had actually gotten other girls in the church pregnant. However, Sharita and Sean have both since passed away as well. Like I said earlier, so many people that lived in that house have passed away, but I think that's very interesting that he was living in the house at the same time. Two years later, he's arrested for essaying two little girls. And it was rumored that he got girls pregnant and he's living in the house with her. But investigators still said that many of the congregation refused to cooperate with the investigation as well. Sharita even declined to allow the police to search the church. This church was eventually shut down and sadly, the investigators still say that they do not know what happened to Selena or her baby but they haven't given up hope. But in a press conference, they said that back in 1996, the investigators had very limited resources, but today they're social media, and so they're hoping to spread the word about Selena. Here's a picture here of what they think that she would look like today. In 2022, investigators said that they had many theories and were currently investigating four new leads. So that was just a couple years ago. Hopefully they're still investigating. And they ask that if you have any information about this case or about the whereabouts of Selena Mays, please contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at the 1-800-THE-LOST or call the Willingboro Police Department at 609-877-3001. What do I think happened to Selena? I definitely think it was somebody at the church. I don't know if it was the cousin. Probably a really good chance or if it was some other adult. I definitely think it was an adult. And I think once her father, CJ, told Selena that they were gonna find out who got her pregnant by a DNA test, she told whoever the adult was, um, and they told her, hey, sneak out. You know, we're gonna run away together. And we're gonna have a great life. That's probably why the night before she ended up kissing everybody and saying, you know, thank you for everything but the person took her and got rid of her. I, I know that this sounds probably not very hopeful, but I just don't think she's still alive. I really feel like if Selena was still alive, at some point she would have reached out to her family, especially after having a baby. I mean, after all these years and her father dying, a lot of people, again, were really upset because the father did not call the police. They didn't call until 24 hours later, and I get it. But I also, you know, think about this being back in 1996 and the fact that he was in this custody battle with the other family. Not saying it's right, just saying that this is what I would think that they're thinking. He did not want the cops to get involved with her being missing, knowing she was pregnant, underage, maybe drawing attention to the church. I don't know. And there's a really good chance that it was just the cousin that was living there too, or any other person that was living there. What do you think? Have you heard about this case? It's absolutely sad. It's sad that her mother has passed away. Um, her father has m most of the people that were in that house. Her little four-year-old sister went up there to look for her, went up the second time and found the pillows under the blanket and she was gone and she disappeared and nobody ever heard from her again. And somebody got away with something. Mm. Y'all let me know what you guys think down below. Other than that, I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.